Hello, 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 everybody. Thank you for coming. Welcome to G Quad, the G Quad family tradition show where good friends become family and family is everything. We'll give the YouTube and Facebook side of the family a chance to come in. Thank you, Psalm 146, Home and Garden. The early bird gets the you know what. And of course, the worms are good for your garden. Maria Graham, thanks, sis. Thank you for co coming. Oh, Mike has been baking all those good pastries. Oh, my good Lord. Just giving people a chance to a chance to get in. I'm not showing that it's live on the YouTube. Val Creates, hello, and thank you for coming. I don't know if Gal Val Creates is another name for the jewelry spot. Bouge, Bouge Prepper, thank you for coming. Sobrina, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, you finished with those squats, did you? My squats are just about to begin. Val Creates, I like that. I thought that was your picture. But guess what? You're so pretty, but that's not what guess what is. The, the surgery that I had, the general anesthesia, I wasn't supposed to have general anesthesia, but it did something to my vision. It's been very, very blurry since a week ago. So that was one of the reasons I haven't been on YouTube other than to watch some a few videos on the screen i couldn't even do that because you know why i was so sick i couldn't even take the remote and dial the channel all i could do was sit up there and look at a blank screen on the tv i appreciate you guys so what has val oh, I, I already know what val's been creating i love 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 how you set the beads out for the earring and I thought of something. I saw a channel with a lady who had challenged vision and her vision, uh, she was talking about things to do. Hey, Sissy Joanne Stevens. She's saying hello to everyone and welcome to the live. Yeah, you can tell that I'm feeling better. I got a little pinky back in my cheeks or something, but it was I was I was sapped out last week. I tried to pretend I wasn't. But you guys know me well enough. My daughter can, she can tell when I, when I talk on the phone. My sister Joanne sends some pastries your way. Oh, some. Oh, my great granddaughter has a baking business, and you should see the pastries she creates. Everybody, everybody breaks because we do that for family holidays. My daughter doesn't bake so much as she cooks all the big, she preps all the big meals. My granddaughter, I don't know why, it must be the, the stuff they gave me in surgery. I don't know why I keep saying, calling my granddaughter, my great granddaughter, but my granddaughter is the one whose birthday was Thursday. She's celebrating today and today is my son's birthday. He's in LA though, I will get up with him after the live, after the live, I don't know what holiday it was like nine months, 10 months before this time of year or around November. There's a lot of babies being born too. I don't know whether it's after the 4th of July, after Christmas, but it sure is. I would love to send some pastries your way, Mike, yours and Auntie Joanne's. Oh, guess what? Auntie Joanne has been throwing down. She's eating out of that little kitchen garden that I planted. What was it? November, December. She's eating out of it and so excited about the taste. She can get look, just a few celery leaves and get more celery taste than from a whole stalk of celery from the store. It's just so interesting. Interesting. Casings 55. Hello, hello, and welcome aboard the G Quad family reunion bus. 
So I know it's spring where most of you are. It's not here in the northern, I would say northern half of the country, but we've had a few days. Thank you, Maria Graham. Maria Graham saying happy birthday to my son, Aaron. Dun, 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 dun. He's the capoeira black belt, among other things. He has other talents as well. He's really good at math and accounting. That's not his job title, but he works in, he's an IT supervisor at an accounting firm. And he, we talk about budget and on point. And he'll tell me, well, mom, such and such and such, except, and 37 says, except you did this, that, and the third. Of course I did. Thank you, Unbiased LLC. You see, I have my banner up that you made for me when my channel crashed the other day. The other day, I don't know if any of the others of you had trouble with, with StreamYard, but StreamYard beat me up. I love that Val creates. So let's see, Joanne Stevens. I like that. I, I like that. Unbiased LLC. So how many of you are doing any kind of a challenge, whether it's in art, whether it's in gardening, the G quad stands for garden quilt and arts show. And I do a little bit of each of those. Although my, my, um, arrow garden over there with my tomato plants, my tiny Tim toma tomato plants and my lettuce looks like that they had the same anesthesia that the, that the doctors gave me because they look in a hot mess, but that's okay because I was going to take them out of the garden, out of the arrow garden anyway, and up pot them to some, some soil, some good little soil. And I was just waiting until this weekend when I start dropping seeds for the, for the, what is it? The Planner Garden TV. So which, Auntie Ellen, are you ready for the Planter Herb Garden Challenge TV? I think so. I think you hooked a sister up, a sister auntie. I think Mike did. I haven't been to the post office myself because of my surgery, but I'll get somebody to go for me. What is this? I have lipstick on my lips or teeth. I'm I'm ready. I'm ready. I have seeds. I have seeds. And I'm sure that some seeds have dropped from my perennials outside. I've been I've been doing gar herbs forever and ever, and I love them. It's not a seed, but some of you I gave butternut squash seeds to last year. I have this huge butternut squash sitting on my little din dinette table that I sit at and the seeds have been drying out. So those of you who would like some more of those, which were germ germinated here in the Northwest and they're really good in cold zones, Gina, Gina, happy Saturday to you and thank you for coming. For those of you who don't know, Gina is about to embark on a community garden project. I am a gorilla gardener. I stick seeds in the soil in anybody's house I go to. I've been known to pinch a, a plant or two here or there in my in the past. Not so much now, but I think I do. Yes, um, you did. And your butternut squash grew faster than anything. Anything. So Gina's going to be the queen of of community gardens because she has a, she's getting a big one. It's 20 feet by 40 feet. My area in my community garden is like eight feet by 40 feet, but that's fine. That's more than I can handle. And I have a few container pots out there. And the other thing is my garden is very, very shady. So I can grow any type of herb in the world. I can grow things that don't need a lot of sunlight but things that need bright sun, like that dragon fruit. And I did check my birthday, not my birthday, my dragon fruit that I got when I got out of the hospital. I'll call it my Valentine's Day presents. We're not going to think about it in terms of the hospital. But, oh, let me show you, you guys. So my daughter brought me some Forever Roses. 
And one of my neighbors, my neighbors came down today. She's a sister friend and she bought me some homemade chicken noodle soup. I wish you guys, I wish they had smell a smell a, what are we doing? Smell a vlog because these smell so good. They look like they're opening up. This is the original side, but where it's aging, look at this. They're turning like silver. Uh, she said that they're going to turn like all silver before they finish, finish drying up. So, yeah, I looked at my dragon fruit plant that another neighbor gave me as smell a screen. That's a good one. That's a good one. Hello, Barb Brownlee. She's saying hello. She likes butterflies, as does Maria Graham. Karen's little garden. Thank you for coming and welcome. Karen, how is your quilt coming? Are you do you doing this this fat quarter this fat quarter quilt here? So uh, put a one in the chat if you're doing a gardening challenge. Put a one in. Hey Matthew Whittington. Haven't seen you for a little minute. Thank you for coming and welcome. Our treasured home, Nancy. I don't mean this. I'm smiling with you, Nancy, because I saw your peanut P B and J pizza, your peanut butter and jelly pizza. Um, yeah, I think that would be pretty good. I'm a peanut butter and jelly queen. I love peanut butter and jelly. I like to just mix it up with a spoon and eat it. I love growing my own. Mr. President at Mike's Chaotic Gardening. So one of the gardening challenges that's going on is not only Planter Garden TV, the WIG 2023 is still going on until I believe it's April. Bouge Prepper's got the tightest little feeling on your boote. <laughs> your boote. Her little boote has been doing all those squats. Hello, mother. Hello, mother. I talked to mommy. I think she might be live today. I didn't say that, mom, about her boote. <laughs> Boohoo with the boote. But I will be doing some squats for starting next week because I had to stop for a few weeks. I do them anyway, but I'll be walking the hallways. My neighbor was telling me about one of the neighbors. I live in a high rise apartment building and a couple of the neighbors, well, some of the neighbors are really elderly. And even though there's a park nearby, they could fall or trip. And there are a couple of neighbors who walk, like people walk in the mall. She, they, they walk here in the hallways. They walk here in the hallways. And thank you all of you whose names appear in green for being a channel member. Because being a channel member, oh, oh, that's so exciting. Karen's Little Garden is waiting on fabrics from Quilt Africa Fabrics. She's doing a little gardening. Quilt Africa Fabrics is the place where I get these fabrics. Who is that? Essential Oils with Famous. He asked where I get them. These fabrics are like no other I have goosebumps. It's like you're going on a date, somebody you really, really want to see, and you're young. And before you see them, you get those little prinkles, those little goosebumps. Well, I don't remember that, even after three marriages, but I do remember getting those goosebumps, Karen, when I opened that beautiful fabric, like that purple fabric that I opened on Thursday. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. And it just feels so exotic. You know, it's like that guy or that girl that smells good, that looks good, has that pretty skin and teeth. That's what this fabric is, you guys. That's what that fabric is. So I want to also tell you about a new challenge. Lead Farmer 73 has a Glory Greens challenge. Now, I had never heard of Glory Canned they have canned collards, canned string beans, and other greens. And if you want to get some, you, our church at home was laughing about the goosebumps. Yeah, yeah. Auntie ain't that old. She remembers, or maybe that anesthesia they gave me 
when they bumped me to sleep last week made me remember. But yeah. So going back to the challenge, Glory Greens, you have to use Glory canned greens. Let farmers camping out on camp. I want to say camp, camp, let farmer camp greens uh, out there on his new property. And his nephew is down from Ohio. And it reminds me of the 1980s when my family bought our North Carolina homestead. And it was all woods, all woods, just forested woods. My parents bought 20 acres of property as well in New Jersey. It was a little bit later than that. And no, no, they bought theirs in the 1960s. And uh, daddy used to always say, buy the land, buy the land, um, growing my own. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming and welcome. So going back to Led's far, Farmer's Challenge, you have to push hashtag Glory Greens. That's all I know. But you can go to Led Farmer's channel and see because they say, Auntie Joanne says they sell Glory Jeans at Winco and they must be good because they're always sold out. Well, I ordered some today and before I could get it checked out of my basket, because I usually buy fresh greens and I freeze them. I grow my own greens or I get them from some of the local farms around here or the farmer's market. I usually just go to the farm. Some of the farms around here, you can even pick them yourself as you could at the farms in North Carolina. You take your own meat cleaver or whacker and you just go out and, and get your own. So I'm going to be entering Lead Farmer 73 Glory Greens. And it can't be, they were talking about another name of greens in his chat, but don't get those. Make sure that you get glory greens and glory greens. Um, anytime lead is talking about, about anything on his channel, it sells out. When I got my solar charger and my solar panels, he mentioned some of them, they went up before I could check out of my cart. So, I am doing the WIG Grow Off 2023. I'm doing the planter garden herbs. I will be doing a lot of them. I'm actually going to just drop some of those straight into the soil. I will probably also just start those other two hydroponic systems just to get the roots going because they grow five times faster in the hydroponics the, except the hydroponics over here. I don't know what that that messed up fertilizer I got. And I bought the whole jug of it. It's like a whole gallon. I will use it in my outside garden. I won't be using it in my hydroponics. I have some samples that came with other hydroponics, including the let pot that I won. When I won... When I won the WIG Grow Off 2022, yeah, some 70, then 74-year-old woman dusted the, took the dust off her shoulders and spanked all those little bottoms out there. And I went over there and I won, I won, I won, I won, I won. Yes, that was so exciting. All the trash talking. Oh, my goodness. I don't know what was more fun eating the food, watching the things germinate, or just talking, talking trash. <laughs> Mike's saying, da -dum, da -dum. so now, oh, and don't forget Auntie Ellen's, Auntie Ellen's Yankee sister homestead. Hello, TT. Hello, sister. Me and Mana. Yankee sister had surgery, you guys, recently. Prayers, please, for her. So did so did our treasured home had surgery. Theirs came out well. Mine came out well. I had some swelling. And they don't give you those stockings anymore at the hospital that's supposed to keep your pressure down, the swelling down. Guess what? I went on Amazon. I let my fingers do the walking. And guess what fell in my cart? I found the, I wish I could get my leg up this high. Um, nope, I'm not going to try. No, I'm not going to put my leg up here or cross it. 
and break something, some stitches. But I bought some compression socks in the men's department. That's just what I did. Mike saying buy tights. I went in the men's department because men do usually have bigger calves than women, except I have huge calves. I have cute, huge calves and thighs and things. A roll of fabric fell in the cart. Roll of, uh, actually, no, this time one of the subscribers had some fabric fall in my cart. It was all that fabric from Quilt Africa Fabrics. And by the way, she has so many different challenges. And she's based in Nigeria. And she has an international clientele. She has subscribers in Canada and Deutschland and all, all over, all races, all creeds, all religions. And that's one of the things we talk about. We talk about the different holidays and the different ethnic groups and people all, all, all over the place. Our church at home, Nancy, I know that you, you so, I want you guys to help me with the project because the, my 15 minutes a day, today is my son's birthday. There's his, uh-oh, it's not finished yet. Here's his birthday present. I just have to finish the little, the little stitches to finish it off. Might as well leave that out in the to-do file. My daughter's birthday is in two weeks. Here's her pillar. Here's her pillow. Anything with animal print will do for her. Uh oh, this one. Now you guys see what I'm doing. I'm doing my 15 minutes ahead. This one is my only grandson's pillow. He's a golfer and his will probably get some work. So I made a really sturdy, a really sturdy handle. Won't fit on his golf cart. I don't speck and see Deutsch, but um, my brother Bill does. Uh, my brother Bill, that was his language in college. And the sport he played was, uh-oh, oh, lacrosse, lacrosse. And he's six foot four. He used to wear them out with that lacrosse stick. This is one that's going out in the family. I just have to sew the the sides in. I just love this fabric. And another one. So that's what I've been doing. I haven't been sewing for my 15 minutes because I want to put my foot up. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I called the doctor to talk about the swelling because I've had a, I speck and say Deutsch, Caro Kuchin and Smeiner favoritism. Oh, that's your favorite language. I think she said I can do a little bit with Latin and a little bit with Spanish. My son and grandson speak speak Portuguese because capoeira, which they excel in in the martial arts, the capoeira, when they do the Batistas and all of the things, they do that in Portuguese because capoeira is it's still Black History Month. Uh, but every every day is Black History Month because Black myth history is American history. But capoeira was a form of training, and it's done to music and flips and dance. Hello, Bayou Sugar. Thank you for coming, and welcome, welcome, welcome. I want to thank each and every one of you for coming. Yeah, so I was telling you about the doctor, and he's telling me either come in or... What did he say? Do, or elevate my leg. It's already elevated. I've been elevating every stinking freaking day. Sorry, mom. I don't know where that came out of your daughter's sweet little lips. And, you know, just being still, whatever. It's hidden as dance. Exactly. So my son has a black belt in it, Mike. And he teaches it at UCLA in addition to teaching swimming. He was um, a lifeguard at... 16. So was Uncle Roscoe, Joanne Stevens' husband. He, they, My family swim, they swim like sharks. My daughter swims like a shark. My granddaughter swims like a shark. My brother and his son 
<laughs> so we have competitions at family gatherings and they're in the they're in the pools or the ocean wherever we are my grandson s- swims like a shark they they have some skills if you ever have a prepper team and you need some folks with some skills them pankies extend whatever their last name is we got some skills to bring to the table auntie joanne this is still not enough auntie joanne has been making cornbread and she made some red beans and rice and she had the andouille sausage in it ah sell my clothes i'm going to heaven i wanted i could taste it through the screen you could like see the hunks of the, of the the meat in there so for my challenge i'm not quite up to sewing darth x you sink to the bottom and walk along the ocean floor no swimming that's okay you can you can crawl back up one of my jobs one time i had to learn how i had to go to the bottom of the pool and get a brick and bring it up and it was funny i'm i'm so buoyant that um maybe that booty of mine has foam in it or something i was born with it i pop up like a buoy i can't swim i can't sing so some of my fellow people in this job helped me get down they pulled my feet down we dived down i grabbed the brick and got it up it was a team effort darth x i hope you had a good birthday i know you had one a while back and you said you had one coming up but I didn't see you after then, but I hope you did have a good one. I did. I went to, I went to Arizona for my month anniversary and took over Auntie Joanne's house and grounds and property for a while until they kicked me out. Me and, they said Mr. Hershey could stay. No, they didn't. Mike said natural flotation. Exactly. So... I want to tell you that about the challenge for doing something artistic every day, it doesn't mean actual sewing, actual painting. You can be planning on doing, on doing something. And I want to give each of you unbiased LLC is cracking out. Uh, You'd be scared to put a brick in a pool because it might crack the pool liner. No, we don't want to do that. We know about expensive fixes. Oh, we know we know about that i had a friend in north carolina the pool liner broke she was trying to find a secondhand one or something and it was years i don't know if she ever found another one so you guys how would you like to help me finish designing my granddaughter sharita's sharita's birthday present well i'll tell you what it is try and show my my flexibility i don't know he's telling me elevate my foot if i elevate it anymore it's already at hip level he's talking about above my heart my heart is up here what am i supposed to do put my leg behind my head or something that's just playing weird come on elevate it above my heart a heart you don't want me to come in your office you can get a punch in the nose so I'm making Sharita a blue dream toad. It's going to end up being the size of GT Junior Grows at Alaska. Hello and welcome. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, the one thing I wanted fell on the floor, of course. But I'm going to get it because, excuse me, you guys. Oy vey. Because it's part of our decision making. And I wanted to show you some art that I got in the hospital. So I brought it home because it was a gift from one of the volunteers to the hospital. Lay in bed and use a wedge pillow. Yes, I am the queen of pillows. I'm sitting in there like surrounded by pillows. I'm so sick of them. I come out and do a few little things around here. So this is a handmade heart. I think this is just adorable. And it was made by somebody who brought it and left it in my hospital room last week. 
I thought it was so cute. I kept it because it was handmade. You can see where she folded it. Oh, I should say when they folded it. Erica Taylor, thank you. Look at this perfect little heart. And then that's the back. And then they opened it up. And then they painted it. But it's so abstract. And you know I love purple. This, this child did not know when... And I think she said she was 15. She was going to some school in there. Hashtag indoor crew. And look at this. So I decided to use this. It gave me the inspiration because I'm going to, you know, I design all my bags. I'm working on some bag tags, those of you who sew, because Unbiased LLC and Crafty Leo make bag tags. So I'm having, you guys have me making so many bags, I'm going to jump up from those little embroidered ones that I use on little things and have some of maybe one and a half by two and a half inches that look, or I can put them on, hmm, not my pillows, although I have gotten a request for pillows, the neck bone pillows with zippers in it. I'm thinking the zipper would catch your hair though around or you couldn't use the all of the sides of the pillow some of uh, some says she's stepping away for a few minutes diaper duty's calling that's okay that's okay blessings for having diaper duty you know so i had some ideas because you know three purple hearts is my signature for fi finding things when i was legally blind i could never see where i was writing in the chats so I would put three purple hearts. So that's part of my signature, but I like hearts anyway. And in my arts and crafts class over the last purple years, I took an old, I just want to show you how you can create some art with what you have. I'm, I don't know if the Dollar Tree or in the stores have any leftover chocolate. This was some chocolate that one of the neighbors gave me. You can see it's almost identical to the one the young lady gave me and she hand cut hers out hers is a little smaller but what i'm getting to is the idea for the pocket for my granddaughter's bag that i'm designing but this is the heart that i use sometimes i just trace it or give it to some of my students to trace and they just paint it some of the nicest they paint they trace it on canvas they paint it with acrylics they do acrylic pours they use watercolor but i just keep this as a stencil and what i did was i traced it and i made an exact template of it then i was looking at it and i said well it's kind of full at the top for a pocket and i don't know how big this little bag is going to be like big rooster's bag. So it'll be like about 11 inches on the side. I don't know if I want the pocket this big. So then I started designing, uh, see where I took the wrapper off the chocolate thing. So find some old, those of you who like hearts, unbiased LLC. I know you like hearts, purple hearts too. Uh, you can just, Make, make your own. So I hand cut some. And one of the things that I use for my patterns and for cutting, I use cheap, this is cheap watercolor paper. When I watercolor paint, some of the watercolor paper is like $27 for a, a one sheet this big. Some of the, um, oh, I can't think of the brand name. As my sister knows, it's like a French name. And you bend it and bend it to cut it. Hey, Nikki. Oh, by the way, the chat is not going live today. She emailed and told me earlier. So I use this paper because it's really, really, really thick. And at the end, guess what? Yep, I'm even going to use the cover. But can you see? You can actually see how thick this paper is. So it's really good if you want to use it for making your own patterns or using it for a template. So here are some little ones because this one was under this one when I cut, or I might make a series of hearts on here, but this is the plan. Dun, 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 dun. 
Sorry for all the leaning and bending. But I'm limited on space. So I hand drew. I hand drew another heart because I wanted one meatier, chunkier. And I actually, at the time, didn't know where the heart from my little friend at the hospital made. So this was a half of a heart that I will probably, that you will probably see again because you can put it down and trace it. Hello, sweet thumb. Thank you for coming and welcome. And then trace the other hand, half or put it on a fold. Unbiased LLC is working and listening. That poor child is just always working. But I thank her the other day when I was having trouble with Steam Yard, I, Stream Yard rather, Steam Yard, I called her and she stopped everything she was doing to help me get my channel back up. She put the new banners in for me when I was still locked out trying to get in. And that really helped a lot. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, Rachel. So that being said, part of my planning, I ironed. This is going to be the lining. My granddaughter likes blue. Oh, I'm sorry, Roses. Auntie didn't mean, she didn't mean to punch you in the eye, elbow you in the eye over here. So I ironed this, but I'm going to put an inside. Let me put this down so I don't have to hold my arms up so high. I'm going to put an inside pocket inside the bag. And so I cut up so many jeans. So, well, let me show you what the, the actual bag looks like. So this is it. It is approximately, I have it written down over there, but it's about 22 inches wide and maybe, I'm not going to tell you, you can email me if you want to make it, but it's about the same size as Big Rusa's bag. This is what it looks like folded. It, by the time I finish putting the sides in, because it's going to be six inches wide at the bottom, why six inches? because she takes it to work every day. She has one about the same size as Big Roosters that she's been carrying every day. It's with that same light fabric. And these are all her children's jeans. That's why you see all these seams going up there. So I like the light fabric, but I don't know. I had this one that I'm going to cut. You like that palette, Mike? Thank you. Hey, Miss Shirley. Thank you for coming and welcome. So you guys, I put some iron on fleece on the inside of this just to give the jeans some stability. And those of you who are planning on making totes, I just want to advise you when you're cutting all those old jeans up, if you have those designer fancy scissors, do not use those, even though they're the sharpest things that you can use. Don't use those for cutting your fabric. It will dull them. As a matter of fact, I have electric scissors, but I don't know what happened to them. They're not here anymore. Unbiased LLC, if you go to her channel, Unbiased, if you can drop your link, if you have time, you can drop your link in the chat. She has an Amazon affiliates link where she can get a little bit of credit for getting a new one. I have a stack of jeans and they're thick. I got big roosters jeans that I'm going to be cutting up because I want to make a blue jean quilt with this shape with uh, like fat quarters. I'm going to cut big, big pieces out. Wheezy, Tay Wheezy, the champ is here. Thank you for coming. And welcome, welcome, welcome. If you're here for the replay, anyone, I thank you for coming. Don't forget to give the thumbs up. If you like the content, why don't you turn on your notification bell, subscribe to the channel, so that you can find us again. G-Mama grows so hard in the garden with that cute little rabbit. And I saw your new joint. You'd think I didn't. I was banned from being on social media 
I didn't want to put on my glasses because I had nausea and dizziness and I couldn't see. So that was my excuse. Everybody say hello to Tay Weezy. So you see the background for the jeans, right? It's already stabilized with um, heat on fleece. And by the way, oh, I guess it fell over. I buy it by the roll. I get it on Amazon and then I just cut pieces. Or you could use the regular uh, double-sided heat and bond light. That's what I, I use in a lot of things. That's not what I'm using in here. So that being said, I'm going to maybe use this heart. Why? Because it won't cover up all these cute little jeans. These are what? One, two, three, four, five, six, 12 different pairs of jeans that I cut into seven and a half inch squares. Well, when you sew things into squares, say it's seven and a half inches, when you finish sewing on each side, you lose a half inch in the seam. So these blocks actually look six and a half inches. And I, I press these seams to the side. Some people press them open. I press them to the side because I thought it would give more, more stability. So that being said, the bottom of this, I think if I make, if I make a pocket about this size, or do you guys like, do you guys like the wider pocket like this one? It covers up more of the blue jean fabric and will almost go to the side. Uh, put a one, if you like the smaller, the smaller pocket and put a two, if you like the wider pocket, the pocket that's going to be. Let me put this in the middle. If you like the one that's going to be a little bit wider. Number one for the narrow pocket or number two, the wide pocket. I see Val creates likes two. Joanne Stevens, one. Val creates two. Erica Taylor, one. Maria Graham, one. Um, and the other thing I was thinking, you guys, G-Mama grows hard in the garden, two. Let me ask you guys a, pre a question. Are you telling me to pot the pocket you want on your dream bag that you and I will be making? Or you want the dream pocket on this bag? <laughs> Erica Taylor saying, hey, Yankee sister. So I'm going to put it back down so you can decide again because I've got all these fabrics going across. This will be the inside. But on this inside... Okay, so we have to decide on two pockets, all right? I know that you can't see my face, but I want to show you some things on my chest since I have a, a black shirt on and I don't have to hold my arms up so much. Oh, and let me show you this. So I'll show you my 15 minutes. These are hand, the handmade straps that are going to be for her bag. So it's going to be about the size of Big Rooster's bag. It's going to be like short and thick and whole lot. And I made the shoulder straps longer so she could fit it under her arms when she's going. You like big pockets, the small pockets. I thought uh, I, I couldn't decide because... I don't know if she wants to put her cell phone in an outside pocket or to put it in an inside pocket. Now, I have some plain fabric like this that I can make a pocket. This was actually a square that's bigger than seven and a half inches. This one looks to be about eight and a half inches. So, and I've already cut. I've already cut the pieces out for the tie. I'm going to put a tie on hers. Why? Because you can fit more stuff in the bag. She can put her, she can actually put her son's basketball in there or his, 
uh, what do you call it? His prepping kit, like in case of any injuries or anything. This was just a, a pretty piece of batik that was left over from this quilt. But it's so gorgeous. It's so gorgeous. And Karen's Little Garden, I just want to say, I mix a lot of batiks with my Quilt Africa fabrics. And my batiks, I like the Indonesian batiks. You can find some online. You can find some in quilt shops. Or you can dye your own. You can just take tea, regular tea. You can use the hibiscus tea makes pretty dye. David Corey, thanks for coming in. It's good to see you too. You can use this for a tie. But I think I'm not, this is not going in this bag because I think it will clash. David Corey saying hello to everybody. So now we're making a decision on two pockets. I have already cut the lining out on the wide one because that was my first inclination. Then I decided, but I'll be making more than one bag. I, I, I have, in fact, I don't own a bag. I don't have a hobo bag. Where am I go hoboing? I can't go. I got nothing to put my stuff in. So I have to make one for myself. And I'm going to make it out of the kids' jeans. Why? Because it's a legacy project. Because I have them and they're saving them for me. I have everybody saving jeans for me. Okay. So, David Corey, um, Miss Shirley said she loved the trees blooming. So, okay, you guys, let's go back because her birthday was two days ago. I got to get this going. So for the outer pocket, uh, you guys like the heart idea? How many of you put a one in the chat if you like the heart on the outside? Or hello, Clovis Gardner. Thank you for coming and welcome. I appreciate each and every one of you. Welcome to the Guard and Quilt and Art Show. So... I was just looking to see what you can see. You can see the things on that chair. Oh, you can actually see. This is actually my apron. I didn't do such a good job with one of these, so I'm going to have to fix one, fix this one. So that's why it's been sitting here. I just didn't get to it. So I need your input for the for my sweet Charita's bag. So I'm going to put, I know what I can do. I can put a wide pocket on the outside with a heart. And I can either do it with so much fabric. And of course, I've got on dark clothes, so it's blending in. So... How do you like this, this to make the heart out of? Can you see that this is um, a pocket? I'll put it back on my chest. And there's enough room on it to put this, for this heart to fit and put it on the outside. And it's dark so it can contrast it's dark this one is dark so it would contrast with this this bag and i'm going to have to decide if i put a dark a dark heart on it i think i would put it on this side with all the light fabrics and put the darker heart i don't know i'll see i'll see decisions 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 but now I'm going to put a pocket on the inside. This will be the inside. And you guys can do the same thing. You don't even have to sew a pocket. You just save some of the pockets. Something just happened to my screen. There you are. Look, I'm just going to save to use one of these in whole. Okay, this is one. This is two. This one's a pretty big one. 
this one's a pretty big one. It has orange. It doesn't match anything, but it's going to be in the inside of the bag. So that's, we'll call the orange one one. This little one too. I think it'll hold a cell phone. And, or a plain pocket on the inside and save it for all of the other stuff. So what do you guys think? Decisions, decisions, decisions. How many of you are going to, okay, um, Rachel, L, Unbiased LLC. So you guys can go to her channel and click on her link. Buy you sugar. I like your garden. It's looking really good. It's looking really good. Gina's saying two. Two. You like the two. Oh, for the cell phone pocket. Yeah, that orange one was, nah, no moss. This pocket. You guys like this pocket. Oh, guess what? How about this? Her cell phone isn't as big as mine. I've got the cell phone from H-E double rail L. But it's not going to be sticking out there. Nobody's phone is this big or this heavy. And it's going to be down inside. I can put this one down inside. Okay, you guys. Okay. So I've got, I've got already cut up. Because I still don't have a bag. My hobo bag isn't done. And I'm one, I started off wanting a hobo bag. So here's more pockets. Clovis said, yeah, two, two. More pockets. Those were the ones I liked the most. This is a cute little pocket. I'm going to order some back tags from Unbiased LLC. More pockets. I still like the other one out there, too. So I saved these pockets to, do, to put on something. So you guys know, don't you, that I cut up all these jeans. All these pieces like this, am I going to throw them away? No. This one even has a little label on side. I'm going to pick it out and put it on something. If I have my own bag tags, I'll be doing it. I'm just showing you all the pockets. This is how many pairs of the kids' jeans and their mother. This is another blue one like the first one. Look at this. So Auntie was working. Work. This is a piece of um, a hem of a denim. So I'm going to be upcycling a lot of denim, which is why I bought that heavy duty, that heavy duty singer machine over there to cut up jeans. And these are some of the pieces, longer pieces that I have cut up already. I started out wanting a jeans quilt and then Big Rooster sent me all the, the, the jeans and look at these. These are all these tiny little kids' jeans. These are part of the, the legs that I had to go through to get those together. So I just wanted to show you that you guys can make something out of nothing. So we will be upcycling this. And I will, I'm going to be putting this together and show you guys my progress. One last thing, I'm going to put my leg down on the floor that I want to do with you guys because remember my whoopee cushion, my whoopee cushion broke. This is almost just like the chair that I sit on over there with my sewing chair. It's a metal chair. This one doesn't, I don't know if this one's metal, but mine is metal and uh, this is what I use so that it doesn't move when I'm backing up, when I'm doing things with my arrow garden or painting and whatnot. The chair isn't moving and I don't fall off. I fell off last year. But they said they now include a pump and this keeps your back straight. So what did I do? I didn't, couldn't find the needle. Then my helper was vacuuming this week. And I saw something on the floor over here. I'm like, I thought it was a needle. It wasn't a lean needle. It was the nozzle to the basketball pump. 
So I just want to tell you guys that I'll stop looking in a minute that I was looking for this black on black and black. So here's the basketball pump and growing with Hudson. You liked and you shared Hudson. I'm so proud of that quilt that you're getting. You guys, Hudson's getting that quilt with the blue and the orange that was back there last week. And that is a special quilt with some fabrics that my daughter, my daughter hand carried on her lap from Tanzania. So I kept this little bottle. I recycled. I was going to use it for some crack key, Michael. Michael, are you there? Michael's Chaotic Gardening. I was going to use this for some crack key stuff, but I needed to keep up with this basketball pump needle. So let's pump it up together so that I can put it over there and keep my back straight. And put my foot up. So what you do is. And this. I was able to buy you guys. Those of you who are able to contribute to the channel. And join the. Friends and family group. I was able to buy this. New pillow. With my money. With my money. It's called a gypsy sit upon. The other one lasted me 10 years. I don't know. This is pretty pretty tough plastic. I don't know how I did it. So I'm putting the putting the needle in the pump. It's not very tight. I have the weakest hands. It's working. Say it's working. So let's find where we pump, pump, pump it up. You know what? This one, I think, is bigger than my other one. I Maybe the booties in the world are growing. It must be all those hormones they're putting in all the meat and all that fake meat. Okay. So I know it was on the back. Let Oh, here it is. Let's see if we can do it. Pump, pump, pump. Pump it up. Let's pump it up, you guys. Whoa, wait. It's not going. Oh, actually it is. Dude. Ugh. Whoop. Came out. <laughs> Let me try it again. Where is this thingy? I don't see where it has. No, once you finish blowing up a basketball, it doesn't. Oh, <laughs> oh! This is ridiculous. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, you guys! I think I'm gonna have to do this in part two because I can't pump, 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 <laughs> pump it. Whoops! It came. <laughs> it came. <laughs> it came out again. Oh well. I guess I'm just gonna have to put it away and live to write another day. Is anybody else going? <laughs> Is anybody else going live? Auntie Joanne said pause. She said pause over here. <laughs> oh, silly rabbit. <laughs> that was funny though. <laughs> so if is anyone going live today, drop it in the chat so we'll look for you. I will be stop being silly and <laughs> a slippery sloppity slop, but it sure was. It didn't work, but I'll get it. I'll get it cracking and get it over there so I can get, I, I actually have my leg down on the floor. You guys, I don't know. Auntie, you tickle me. <laughs> oh, I tickle my own self. The kids say I'm the funnest Nana ever. I'm always in trouble with their parents though. Always in trouble. They're like, Nana, what did you do? I did my job. I raised you so that you could have children. And now my job is just to love my children. 
and my grandchildren and great grandchildren. It's not my job to make them behave. That's your job. It's me to get their brains going so they can drive you crazy like y'all drove me crazy. Payback is being a grandmother. You can sit the kids on the kids. You can sit the kids on your kids, right? That's what happens. Lay the cushion flat and then pump it up. I'm going to have to take a pause, like everybody said, and pump, 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 pump it up. So the next site you see will be Thursday. I'm actually going to do a little video, you guys. Auntie Joanne, do you have any 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 of your radishes in the house? Her, oh, what do you call those? Oh, French, those French radishes. She's eating her radishes out of the garden. And where the greens that I sowed, I sowed a whole bunch of seeds way too close. We're using them like microgreens to grow on top, to go on top of them. So we're just having fun. Me, I got nothing fresh to eat because the things in the arrow garden look half dead. I'm going to have to revive them now that I'm revived. The dragon fruit I found out is a miniature ornamental. And I have tons and tons of seeds. I didn't do what, what was the spring miss? But my friends included me. I've got some seeds. Auntie Joanne said she's going to pick more microgreens tomorrow. I still have time. I got time. And it's getting kind of warm here in Connecticut. Six. Oh, silly me. I can't go to my garden. I have a community garden here. And... Dun, 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 dun. I can't show you the edge of it. I can't take my walker down all those steps. And it's a long way around. And my walker would be all muddy. So I guess I have to wait until I can use a cane. Every time I hear radishes, it reminds me of the evil henchman in Veggie Tales. That is so funny. All right, you guys. So enjoy. I'll see you. Do what you love. Love what you do. You guys made me get up and show up today so that I could see what you were doing, so that you could see what I was doing, so that I could inspire you. And we all had a good laugh. This was fun. This is an American Sign Language. This is an I. Ego amo te mother. An L is for love. This is the signal you. I love you. Ego amo te. I love you, mommy. David Corey says, nice live as always. Thanks, you guys. Thanks, Ku, for visiting your dear old Auntie Nana. I enjoyed you.